Hello and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Join us here at each show where we visit RV products and services and RV tips, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So relax, grab a cup of coffee, let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody, I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. I'm your host today. And we are now sponsored by RV Locks, specializing in remote and keyless entry systems for your RV. Today, we have a great interview coming from a couple, or actually a working couple, living full-time in their RV. And boy, did they have some really good advice for us. We also want to take the time to let you know we have a contest coming. Not just any contest, a great contest. And we will uh, tell you more about how to enter into the contest next week. And guess what we're going to have for you? Your very own RV Lock Keyless Entry System. Yep. Make sure on next week's show that you listen to how you enter into the contest. And make sure you tell your friends. And if you have somebody uh, like to get a keyless entry for their RV... Tell them to get on our site here and uh, listen up, and we'll tell you exactly how to get in the contest. Everybody that owns either a fifth wheel, a trailer, or a camper is eligible. In the meantime, we also have a very good discount for you. If you look in the description of our show, you'll see a link to RV Locks, and you can save, I believe, up to $54 on the purchase of your own keyless entry for your RV. I have personally met with the owner of this company and I'm telling you that they truly have a good product and they stand behind their product and they're very proud of it. We are so grateful to have them as a sponsor. So today before we uh, get our interview going here I want to spend a little time going through a few observations I've had lately being in an RV park and it's been really interesting the people we have met for example today you're going to hear an interview from a working couple they're in their early 50s uh, they're not planning on retiring anytime soon they own a beautiful RV and they work both of them work in nine to five jobs and they are just happy as a lark and uh, so that's one example of what people are doing with their RVs nowadays and I think it's a a new phenomenon that's going to start happening more and more. When you have to pay for four hundred thousand to six hundred thousand dollars for a house close to the city, an RV is a great choice. The other thing I've been meeting is a couple of single folks, um, adults, and like the one I just met this week. He was a linesman, a lineman for an electric company, and he needed to move with his work and he had a nice hitchhiker fifth wheel and I, he lives in it today and he just moves and follows his work. I've also met semi-retired people. Uh, the last one I just met was a healthcare worker for mental health and he registers himself with different healthcare groups and supports counseling and does it as, at his own leisure. And not to discount the folks that are all you would call them extended or part-timers. Uh, some are retired, some aren't. That have a home somewhere. And I met a lot of Californians that are actually up here in the Northwest right now in September. Where the crowds are down a little bit and the weather's still pretty good. And they love coming up here to go see the Space Needle at Seattle. Or go see uh, Boeing and uh, all those giant jumbo jets they build. Uh, all the beautiful water and the green trees we have here. And of course, last but not least, <laughs> full-timers uh, or retired folks. Um, just having a ball, moving around, trying to see how many uh, states they can get <laughs> posted on their wall. And boy, I'm seeing all ages. And I swear, anybody that's retired that's an RVer, look younger. I don't know why. 
I've met more folks that are 65 to 75 years old, and I could swear that they're barely 60. So it's amazing. I think the RV life and living is just plain old good for your health. And one of the other things I wanted to talk about, especially before we start the interview, is flags. Yep, I said flags. Or custom flags. Or flag poles. So I just recently got a flag pole from Camping World and installed it on our fifth wheel. And of course, I don't have an American flag on there, which I'm more than proud to have. But RV Travel Buddy has their own flag. So, of course, it makes sense for us to put our own flag up there. So we, I think for $59, we are able to get a custom flag made for us. And if you ever have a question of how we did that, uh, just shoot us uh, an email and we'll tell you how. Anyway, we had a custom flag made for RV Travel Buddy. And I think we'll probably get one made for RV Talk Radio and put those on our RV because that's kind of our thing. And I'm starting to notice uh, there's not a lot of people do it, but up here, oh, maybe one out of every 10 rigs have a flag. Some of them are just a good old American flag. Some are uh, Canadian flags because we're here in Washington. And then there's been some custom ones also. So having a flag for your RV is a lot of fun, actually. And the more I, I've heard is like if you go to places like Quartzsite and all that, um, that's kind of a standard down there to kind of have some kind of fun flag to put off of your RV. So it doesn't have to be a business. It can be the name of your website or something special about your family or maybe a nickname you guys have. So uh, anyway, I highly recommend if you, uh, if anything, just be proud to be an American and put a nice American flag up on your rig. Some people on a fifth wheel, they'll put them in the front and just lean them out like a, a banner. But I'm talking about full full-blown um, flag poles which are actually very easy to put on and they're telescopic so they're very easy to take off too so they really don't cause any issues as far as uh, traveling uh, they usually attach to your ladder in the back of your RV or trailer and they just pop right in you extend it out and there you go you're set to go and then taking them down takes a half a minute it doesn't take any time at all so anyway, next time you go RVing, maybe stop by Camping World, get yourself a flagpole. Lots of fun. Today's RV interview. Today's interview is with a couple or working couple that are living full time in their RV. They have a beautiful fifth wheel and I'll let them talk about it. And this is another great example of ways people are using their RVs. It's just not always going to be retired people. So here we go. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio and today I have Boyd McPherson and Janice McPherson. Oh nice to meet you. We're here at Pleasant Lake RV Park and these folks have been uh, nice enough to let us interview them. They are full timers and my first question is what is your ages? Oh, 51 and a half. 51 and a half and... 59. Oh, okay. So you guys are right the same age as me and Sherry. Um, and where are you originally from? I'm originally from Maine. Uh-huh. Oak Harbor. Oak Harbor. And, of course. and did you guys live in Washington State before you started full-timing? Yes, we've lived in Washington for... Well, I've lived in Washington for about 38 years. Oh, okay. So you haven't had a chance to go very far from your original location yet. Is that correct? Yeah, we've been to Montana a few times. Oh, have you? Yeah. Okay. With, with the rig? Well, with a smaller rig than this. Oh, okay, one. okay. Um, <clears throat> so, the next question i got to ask for people to know what we're in. What kind of rig do you have here? I've got a Montana fifth wheel. Uh-huh. It's a 3285. Really? It looks bigger than that. And uh, what year is it? It's a 2014. Okay. Anyway, folks, this is a beautiful, beautiful RV. Um, you always hear us talking about our Montana, and it's always neat to see other people's Montanas, and it's a beautiful rig. So uh, what made you choose this particular style? Um, well, we knew we needed a bigger rig, because uh -huh. so, we had moved from a 21-foot outback oh. 
to this. <laughs> That's a big change. A big change. And uh, <clears throat> I'm a little bit claustrophobic, so I wanted something with a large living area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wanted something fairly open and with a lot of kitchen counter space because we like to cook. And how long have you had this rig? Uh, exactly one year. Okay. And what kind of tow wheel, uh, you don't tow, what kind of rig are you using to pull it? I've got a, I bought a used uh, F350, a 2012 with the 6.7 power stroke. Nice. And it handles, the, handles it pretty good, eh? You don't even know what's back there. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, what, what type of truck is that so people can... Uh, it, it's a F... Ford F three fifty three fifty with okay. the six seven power stroke diesel. And you're very happy with that. Very happy. All right, note that down, people. It's so, a one ton. It is a one ton. Yeah, F three fifty. That's yep. Uh, is it? It's not a dually, is it? No. Okay. Uh, in fact, when I was considering a rig, I considered a dually, and I talked with the people at Tacoma RV where I bought the rig that oh, pull them back from Elkhart, from Indiana. Too. Yeah. And they recommend the single rear wheel because in snow, the dualies don't have as much pressure on the road and they break loose faster. I agree with that. That's a <laughs> fact because I have a dually. In it. It's a truck that's a dually that's two-wheel drive, in the snow, it's a one-ton sled. <laughs> so, let that be well noted. So, now we got over what kind of gorgeous, gorgeous machines you have here, but... Uh, so the first thing I is, I, I was going to ask you, but you've been only to a few states, but I got a feeling I know which one you're going to tell me. But what's your favorite state so far? Washington. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Washington is a beautiful state. So uh, you you've been to some other states. So you said you've been to Montana and some other places. Right? Yeah, typically we uh, once a year we'll go to Montana and do a little hunting over there. Oh, good. All the way in eastern Montana. And I usually pull a, a smaller coach for that. Yeah, yeah. Good. And so, have you had a chance to kind of figure out what your favorite places are yet, so far? Well, we typically winter here at Lake Pleasant. And then we winter, or we do a summer, uh, quite often up in Granite Falls at a private camping area up there oh. on a river. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's pretty nice. And so... Would you say that's one of your favorite parks over there, or you, uh, the one you're currently at? This is a much better... Since they have really st uh, pretty strict bylaws, and, and they, they really maintain this place well, it's very pleasant to live here, even with the concentration of campers that are here. Yeah. I mean, the people are nice. Uh, it, it's a, We have a big dog, so it's a good place to walk him. Uh, where we stay in the summertime, it's uh, the road's a little busy and a little more dangerous to walk the dog. Yeah. So yeah, this um, I, I noticed this is a good place to walk your your pets. I've noticed that. So, um, so is it too early to ask you guys what you guys look for in an RV park that you prefer? Um, one with a 50 amp service for the big coach. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, we like to have, uh, a, a little bit of woods, but not completely dense forest. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we like to be able to spend some time outdoors. I like to have, uh, coffee in the morning and a glass of wine in the evening outdoors. Yeah, yeah. So, um, we've always been outdoors people, so it, it makes it kind of nice. So, um, as a younger couple, and I'm kind of breaking, um, I try to... I always think of new questions when we go along here, but um, you folks are still, um, I would say, I'm going to say the working class. We're, we're still yeah. both working. Yeah. Oh, both of you are working still. Yep. Okay. No, we... And do you plan on retiring soon, or are you going to try to be kind of a work camping kind of uh, uh, We'll be continuing to work for at least another <laughs> dozen years. Yeah. And, and Sherry and I are doing the same thing. But, uh, um, do you think you'll try to stay in the general location or maybe look at some different careers in the future? Uh, I think we'll probably stay in our current careers. Yeah. Um, she's an office manager locally, and uh, I have a small general contracting business. Gotcha. So, so is there a particular reason why you chose an RV over, say, renting a house or, or buying a house? Um, 
if you don't mind me asking. <laughs> well, we, we had some financial issues back in uh, 2009-10. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> so so, so we, yeah. we had to give up our house. <laughs> yes, we and did then, too. Yeah, and then I took a full-time job as a facilities manager where we lived on site. Oh, gotcha. And when the facility was being sold last year, we realized that my job would be ending there. So I went ahead and um, we decided to try the full time thing last early or late last spring, mm. and we moved into our small coach. And then in the fall, we decided we liked it, and we said, thought if we could make a deal on a larger coach, we would, and we did, and we are. Yeah, we kind of. Um, I I know we're kind of in sensitive ground here, cause, and but I, the only reason I was staying it was because Sherry and I share a similar situation in two thousand eight, um, but. I think because of the, maybe you might agree, maybe disagree, that what happened to you and what happened to us uh, back then with uh, the interest rates, I mean, uh, houses going crazy and, and jobs like that, do you feel a lot older and wiser now that we went through that and, and some of us took a punch in the jaw? <laughs> well, uh, I would say yes. Um we learned a lot through that experience. It was very humbling. Yes, I, I agree. And, um, you know, we kind of figured out what was important on our lives. Yeah. And, and that's uh, kind of what I'm trying to bring out here is I think if you're, would it be in agreement with me is both Sherry and I have discovered what was important to us and two that Americans, I think in general, um, are, we're getting in debt so much and then with the mortgages and the banks and all that stuff and when times get tough uh suddenly there's not much mercy out there <laughs> and, no well uh, we we did not have a flamboyant lifestyle at all yeah neither did we so. uh we lived actually quite humbly we were actually saving 25 percent of our gross income yeah and uh unfortunately wasn't enough was wasn't it? enough yeah i know and uh so we had to make some hard choices and uh, like I said, it was a very humbling experience. We learned a lot. Um, so when we were able to buy this coach, it was like kind of like starting over again. Yeah, we feel the same way. And it's going to be probably a two to a five year thing, maybe a little longer. You know, it depends on how health is and all of that. Yeah. The one thing we have found is because there are so many people out there full timing, spots are very, very competitive to get. Yes, yes. So well, that's really interesting, and uh, I'm really I'm really grateful you, know, you allowed us to go in that direction, because I really think um, RV. Uh, one of the things with RV Travel Buddy and RV Talk Radio is we try not to just think as the RVer as the person just retires and goes out and enjoys life. We think the RV is more of a tool, can be more of a tool and a resource, along with the other great things too. And so we have met so many working class folks, uh, retired folks on a fixed income that can live in a nice uh, facility at a low cost because of fixed income and things like that. So, and then a lot of us have also had um, a heartbreak or some issues have happened, and and then we've discovered the RV. <laughs> so, I, I guess one of the big messages that we like to put out is is take a look at RVs as an option for change mm -hmm. um and, I would agree. and it could be possible because first of all if, especially young adults you know we're dealing with uh school uh loans right um, um they're getting in debt so much and and now these poor kids have got to buy four hundred five hundred thousand dollar houses and uh so an rv is a good alternative to getting started and right. keeping your costs down so anyway that's kind of one of the reasons i went there so but let me go on with some nice things that we want to talk about too is now that you've um, had this for a rig for a while and you've had some four timing before, have you um, come up with any favorite electronics that you like that uh, well, uh, can't live without? <laughs> well, the Android phone. Oh, definitely. It, 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 because I use that as my Wi Fi hotspot uh -huh. for internet access. Yes. So that comes out really good. You yeah. Know, so um, that kind of. So you're, um, you use hotspot? Yeah, I use the Wi-Fi hotspot with my uh, uh, my S5 Active. Yeah, 
And then uh, we also have a tablet that she uses. Yes, and, that's too. And then uh, I so, how many gigs a month do you get off of your phone? Do you know? It's like fifty-five. Fifty-five gigs. Yeah. Wow. What what service are you with? AT and T. Wow. <laughs> I I on my phone I can only get six gigs from Sprint. Oh no, we we, we have a family plan because our mother in law has a a cell phone on our plan. Yeah. And so we we have uh, basically four cell phones on it and uh -huh. two tablets. Yeah, so we have a business plan too, but we still can't pull the gigs like you're doing. So we may have to consider something different. So that's good good information. Hi, baby. Um, and we are going to talk about, I have this beautiful dog that I'm playing with while we're doing this interview. And we'll talk about the dog in a minute. So if you hear a dog making some noise and stuff, she's a playful little thing. Um, young man and uh she's playing with me right now so if you hear some funny noises this is a live uh interview so um just be patient with us so as time has gone on here uh favorite tools that you've come up with so far well you need to have a cordless screwdriver at all times <laughs> that's mandatory <laughs> and then the other thing that i like to use i have the little klein 11 in one screwdriver where it has square drive phillips yeah, all yeah. of that that's just handy to have oh, no kidding and then mm -hmm. uh, of course you've got to have a leatherman yeah. and, and a variety of flashlights okay. mm -hmm. um you know i you, i have a small compressor that i use to check my tires you know i have a torque wrench and all of that so that i before trips you know i check the torque on all the wheels and all of that yeah yeah um you know i have just a small set of tools up to half inch drive that you know fit just about everything on the coach nice a uh, lot, lot of uh, fuses extra fuses extra led lamps that sort of thing so um I'm going to ask you real quick because I wasn't going to ask earlier, but are you using very much uh, LED lights yet? Uh, almost every light on this coach is LED, except really? the exterior lights and the lights in the basement. Now, did you have to convert them yourself? No, or? that's the way they came. Oh, really? I've got to convert mine. So I'm actually doing a little series on a on, um, video that we we're talking about LED lights. We figured if we change every light <laughs> in our rv to leds it's going to cost us almost six hundred dollars yes it's like so we're slowly <laughs> we're yeah. slowly hitting all the lights that we use the most and uh um and my biggest concern there folks and i don't know if you noticed it, is the heat that those things produce with a regular uh, um, bulb in them is amazingly hot yes and so uh i'm i'm looking forward to uh, making sure we get well, this fixture above yeah, me, this is LED, I guess. It, is, it is, yeah, it's the wrong, it, this is the, not the warm LED, this, yeah. but these, this, these two lamps right here had regular uh, RV type bulbs, the 12 volt yeah. lamps in them. Amazingly and, hot. Huh? And, and they burned out quite quickly, so yeah. I replaced them with LEDs, but I would probably go with the warmer white rather than the cooler white. I agree, yeah, I think we're kind of going through the same thing you are. Um, next question I got for you is since now you've been full-timing for a year and a half mm -hmm. um what's the some uh, interesting issues or challenges that you've had to overcome or, or deal with uh quite often the density of the people i mean mm. and i would say probably the biggest challenge that we have had is downsizing <laughs> yeah. uh you know we moved out of a four bedroom three bath house <clears throat> three car garage and a boathouse yes to a you know just a, a 400 square foot rv yeah so there's no place for 20 suits in a coach like this <laughs> i have seen i was a boy manager so i couldn't get rid of my suits and i couldn't get rid of my ties and yeah. i still stored them i don't know why i can't get rid of them but yeah. that's the kind of junk that we need to get rid of huh yep yeah. uh so. you can't have 50 pair of shoes no you, you can't. can't have 14 sweaters <clears throat> i mean you're limited yeah so did you have the same problem we just sherry and i just did a video yesterday about this when you're going from a house to your rv <laughs> did you find yourself doubled up on a lot of things like paper towels toilet paper coffee things because you had it in two different locations uh with the food initially yeah because we you know had to deal with a freezer and getting rid of all of that yeah um and we always had a year's worth of dry goods in our home yeah so we had to you know we gave a lot of that to um you know food banks and things like that uh we've given up all of our furniture 
we had a, a friend in need, so we gave them, you know, dining room set, bedroom set, uh, living room set, big flat screen TVs, <laughs> VC or DVRs, the whole bit. We just uh, th there you go. So I gotta ask now that you've done that, how does that make you both of you feel? How do, how do you feel about not having all that stuff? I don't need it. You know, I, I realize that what I have here is all I need. Yeah. So I don't really need all that other stuff. Yeah. I don't have that much stuff to clean. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cleaning that's nicer, but yeah. How about you? How do you does it feel less stressful? Actually there's still a certain degree of stress on me because we still have a lot of stuff in storage. Yeah. Um, you know, I used to be a fairly reasonable gourmet cook, so, you know, I got the food processors and the KitchenAid mixers and every pan gadget known to man, so, yeah, yeah. you know, we've been slowly getting rid of that, um, uh, having a, you can't have a large gun safe okay. in a coach, so you have okay. to kind of go through that collection a little bit. So one thing I've noticed about your RV is is I don't see in a lot of other RVs is they manage to bring in a couple of amenities that you don't usually always see. Is I notice you have a rotisserie. Yep, George Foreman rotisserie. You have an espresso maker. Mm -hmm. And what's the other? That's just the reg regular maker. coffee maker. Coffee pot. But uh, because of the design of their coach, they have a big island in the middle of their coach, and they're uh, they found a way to use some of the tools that they enjoy cooking with that some folks would say leave it home but um the way they've utilized it um it fits the coach well so yeah. and this you was don't a have small, to give up everything <laughs> yeah well this was a small set of shelves that we had in our kitchen yeah yeah and so that holds a computer printer and a few pots and pans and our rotisserie grill and it just extends right onto the bar yeah that's perfect so anyway so you don't have to give up everything folks if you have a favorite cooking device um there's a way to get it in you just have to use a little ingenuity right so um uh, I'll ask any big problems come to mind that you've had in the last year and a half. We've had a few minor warranty issues with the coach, oh, yes, uh, and um, but Keystone and Tacoma RV have have stood by everything. Um, you know, a couple of the things that we took it in for came damaged in shipping, and we've had to take it back one other time. But they're the coach uh, is holding up well, yeah. And uh, and both Tacoma RV and Keystone so far have been good to deal with. Yeah, I got. Admit, I've actually dealt with the same company, and when I bought my first Montana in 2006, and we had a issue with a tank, and we were living full time in it. They were very cooperative, very uh, um, understanding, and we were able to resolve our issues. So, um, uh, so I give. Tacoma RV, a thumbs up. Uh, it's never perfect. I can tell you, I, they'll never make it perfect as far as how to get your parts and turned in and stuff. But the overall experience to me was all right. So it sounds like it was okay with you well, guys too. Well, when we bought our first RV back in 2007, her uncle told us, remember two things, Boyd. You're in a rolling leak and in a rolling earthquake. Yes. So, you know, you you just got to pay attention to the caulking and, you know, walking the roof and all the joints a couple of times a year. Yeah. Um, just really important to stay on top of your maintenance. Awesome. So, um, we kind of, uh, you kind of hinted in some of it, but what are uh, some of your folks' hobbies? Well, our uh, our bird dog uh, takes up a lot of our time. <laughs> now, what, I, I was going to ask you earlier what your uh, dog is, but can you tell us what kind of dog you have? It's a beautiful dog. It's a Vishla. A Vishla. It's a Hungarian pointer. He's two and a half years old, and uh, he's, he's uh, very active. Yes, he is, and very good dog, though. Yep. No, he's just there's not a mean bone in his body. Yeah, he's uh. While we've been doing this interview, he's come over and visited with me. Talked at the door a few times. Let me out. Let me in. Let me out. Let me in. <laughs> That's yeah. one of the things about finding a place is the size of the dog. True. Yeah. Oh, that's a yes. good point. Actually, when we came in here, the size of the dog they would allow was 40 pounds. I saw that. <laughs> and, and when I put on there 50 pounds, I wanted to be honest. And uh, and they, they said we do that on a case-by-case -case basis. 
I mean, if it was a 80-pound Rottweiler or a pit bull, they might have a problem. I don't know. Agreed. But um, because of the nature of this dog and the fact that we also got a, a CGC on him through AKC, yeah. Canine Good Citizen, um, you know, that, that was a factor. We just told everybody our dog was a star. Because <laughs> <laughs> Cinder, everybody knows Cinder from RV Travel Buddy. So mm -hmm. uh, she even has a stuffed animal. So I made sure and parked the truck right in front of the window of the office. So Cinder was right there because she's adorable. <laughs> So Cinder just out there with an adorable face, and I said, "Well, that's our dog in there. Any problem?" Oh no, she seems good. And I go, and plus I told him that's the uh, Cinder from RV Travel Buddy. So uh, anyway, so we had absolutely no issues with the dog. So uh, um, I think I would agree, and I think this is good advice for people listening to us: is as uh, the policies are standard for folks that do have some extreme dogs, and um, I think uh, most of the areas you go to are not rock solid you know saying hey that's over 50 pounds or whatever right. um if you show them the nature of the dog tell them that they've been trained show them you carry poopy bags everywhere you go things like that um i don't think i haven't come across anything that really kept me from any park with with cinder and she's 80 pounds so I've had I don't problem. know how it would be on a you know night by night or a week by week basis. But yeah. look, before we came here, we looked at three other full time places that wouldn't allow a dog over twenty pounds. Wow, they're that there's yeah. steadfast on that. Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, I haven't come across that yet. So yeah, those were both in the Marysville area. Yeah, that's good to know because I they, and that seems silly. It's like because oh, where we go, RV Travel Buddy advertises the sites and, and the art the park. To say no to us, to me, seems like a, a really bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I think if I was able to talk to RV parks, I'd say take the case by case basis, and 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 because um, they're um, there's the big dogs um, are, 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 are to me sometimes more controllable than the little yappers. Yappers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that, okay. So we better not go any farther with that. So that doesn't mean I don't like yappers, guys. So um, uh, my next question is: Yours might be a little different because you haven't traveled a lot yet. But do you guys have any uh, unique memberships or clubs that, that are pertaining to your RVing adventures here? Oh uh, well, we're life members of the Good Sam Club. Good Sam, yeah, yeah. me too. And uh, and like I said, we belong to a private camping club that's. Uh, at the in granite falls okay but it doesn't allow the public in oh and uh, i have to check you have to tell me more about that later okay i, I haven't really uh, i don't know much about private camping clubs but i, I keep running into them once in a while and um um i i all i can guess on those is it's got to fit your needs you know it's, it, it depends on the couple or right. the family you really what you're going to be doing like for example folks like you you're going to be around for another five ten years that would probably make a lot of sense mm -hmm. but if somebody like us who's going to probably head south eventually um it wouldn't make sense to do something like that at all but cost of, it sounds cost effective though so anyway so good sam is the one that um do you happen to use their extended warranties or anything uh we use the roadside service which we found to be better than AAA. really yes. really good yep. it's actually more reasonable and if we have a long toe they take care of the long toe yeah see i'm not sure if this interview is better for the folks listening or for me because i'm actually i was just on the phone with good sam yesterday looking at that service and i'm thinking about getting it um because <clears throat> We'll try to specialize in insurance here pretty soon, but Sherry and I are actually doing the finding the right kind of insurance to cover to coach well our uh, Montana properly. Mm -hmm. Now we we're with State Farm, which is a normal um, insurance, but when it comes to a coach, my understanding was uh, is um, if you're living in your trailer full time, you're actually nullifying some of the coverage that you have with normal insurance with a River Correct. Auto. Correct. So we're trying to uh, rectify that, fix it, um, and so uh, we'll have to. I have to have another conversation. We may have to do another interview just talking about insurances. So, um, but awesome. Yeah. So memberships, uh, good Sam. Uh, communication tools that you guys use. Um, I know you have a tablet. Yeah, we use phones, tablets, and um, laptop computer. Yeah. You guys ever do any skyping? 
Uh, I do for work, but I have not done any Skyping out of the coach. Gotcha. Um, do you have grandkids? Have no children at all. Oh, really? Oh, okay, so you don't have to try to keep in touch with them. So uh, that's why I was asking. It's like, how do you keep in touch with a fam? How about other family members? Mo uh, mother, yeah. fathers? Cell phone. Cell phone? Yeah. Okay. Nothing and an occasional email. Oh, okay. To my sister and brother. They live back east. Gotcha. Um, you'd be amazed how many people still avoid the internet. And it's usually your folks in the uh, 60 or 70 years old are still fighting it. <laughs> That's well, why I asked that I, I don't do a lot of shopping. You know, I'm always very concerned about giving yeah. credit card and uh, Social Security information out. I see a lot of folks feel that way. But we uh, we also are subscribed to, um, uh, what is that, identity? Oh, um, like what? LifeLock, Life yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I think LifeLock is an important part of anyone's life, whether you're an RV or not. Super. Yes, um, so uh, while we're talking about kind of electronics here, um, how do you get your television? Uh, I have a tailgater, which is a portable system that um, you buy a receiver, you buy the dish. You set the dish so that the handle is pointing north. Yeah. You come turn your receiver on, and in <clears throat> five minutes it dials itself in on the, on the uh, satellite, and you've got TV. Is that part of Dish Network? Yeah, it's part it? of Dish. And um, may I ask what the average monthly cost is on that? Uh, the plan that we have. Uh, for you guys? Yeah, for our plan is like $88 a month. And is that, is that a pretty loaded plan? That's or? a pretty loaded plan. It gets me the golf channel. It mm. gets me a lot of... I don't do a lot of sports. It gets me all of the outdoors channels that I wanted. Yeah. And uh, the device you're using, is it a mobile, like... Uh, yeah, uh, it's a little fiberglass little, uh, cube. Looks like an egg or a cube? Yeah, it's a little kind of a trapezoidal type okay. thing. Okay, wow. And uh, where did you go to get that set up? Uh, I just bought the two pieces at uh, Camping World, yeah. and I came home, I set it in. And two pieces being the actual receiver, receiver and, and the dish. The dish, okay. With and, the cable. And you just got home and made a phone call? Yes. <laughs> okay, gotcha. And I, that's um, I've done that before, but I just want to make sure the process hasn't changed. <laughs> Initially, it did not work well because the receiver was bad. Oh, so uh, they sent me a new receiver in a couple of days, and I put the uh, bad receiver in a um, box and sent it back. Yeah. And then the, the next, I mean, the next time I had it set up in 15 minutes. Awesome. Initial setup. Um, I've, I say, um, we kind of hit it a little bit, but can you think of any other pet, pet issues you've had other than uh, size? Um. um Having two indoor cats also. Oh, you uh, two cats? Yeah. I haven't seen your cat. F finding a place for a litter box was, yeah. a, was a challenge. <laughs> That's all, yeah. And uh, what we did is we, we, we bought a piece of linoleum to put uh -huh. over a car one of the carpeted areas in the coach. Uh -huh. So that, and then we bought a covered litter box. Yeah, we did the same. To keep the dog out. Yeah. And uh, so everybody gets along well. So yeah, I didn't realize. Um, I don't know why you didn't pick up, um, pick up on the cats. Um, the cats you know, are in the bedroom. Yeah, it's like I, cats love me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's, so you got two cats, and uh, we have a cat too, and uh, we did the cover. The cover is really uh, nice, and we also when you have a big dog like ours, they like the kitty rocas. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, uh, we did the same thing. We had a cubby hole like that, and we turned the face of it. Where to, the to dog the can't get in it, but the cat can easily get in it. So exactly yep. the same thing we've done. Okay. Um, have you had any mail issues getting your mail? Uh, before we went full time, we got uh, a personal mailbox, so that we picked that up once or twice a week. Uh, the pr particular place that we have it at, if we gave them like a debit card number and we were on the road, right. they would forward it to us a couple times a month okay. for, uh, for a nominal fee. Did you use a, like a UPS store or did you use a, a, a private? It's a, it's a private one. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was important to us, since we both work, we needed to have access to it after normal work hours. Yes. So the one, one of the first ones we looked at, we could only get in Monday through Friday, you know, nine to six. 
well, it didn't work for us. Yeah, yeah. So, so we did some exploration, and we found one that the office part of it is closed off, but where the mailboxes are, you have 24-7 access. Yeah, and you and I were talking earlier on mail. Is um, um, I've heard, and I, I've always made sure I didn't do it, but I never set up a special box that's a P.O. box. No, you don't want to use a P.O. box, because yeah. in states like Washington, to get a driver's license or to register your vehicle or to have a concealed pistol license, you have to have a physical address. Yeah. So this allows that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and we've heard the same thing. And uh, I've heard um, that a lot of people uh, move on paper to either North or South Dakota, where they make it very easy to get driver's licenses and all yeah. of that. Actually, there was just a report done uh, a couple of weeks ago from uh, another podcast, and they're finding North Dakota, Dakota which was preferred, um, is starting to raise the rates mm. because I think it's because all the my, uh, oil, oil, so um, um, uh, uh, communities are growing over there, so mm -hmm. now they're raising their rates and now in, uh, taxes are going up so revenue um, revenue revenue yeah so actually north to uh dakota is not is not considered the, the best place anymore and uh and it, which is a shame because that's what you know all of us kind of knew that and, and it's like um but when folks uh from another podcast they're saying that they uh they're residing in florida and they but they have their residence there well, the prices were getting equal, so they finally just said, well, heck with it. They moved it all back to Florida. Mm. Um, so because the, the rates are almost the same now, so which is really sad. So so I would suggest, and I know you probably would too, is like, uh, do your homework. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, in these communities, there's lots of people. Hey, baby. Uh, That's and, all right. And, this is a live interview. Get that, <laughs> dogs. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um don't be afraid to talk to people that are, are full-timers. I mean, you can get little nuggets and tidbits of information from almost anybody you talk with. Yeah. Oh, we're eating. Um, I forgot to look at my next questions. Um, any particular, in your case, we talked about this earlier, but um, I was going to ask you if you had any safety issues come up, but I guess the best question is, is what preventative safety things do you do? Well, typically once a week when I dump tanks, I do a visual inspection of the coach. Uh, you know, I always do a light check, um, you know, lubricate the doors, lubricate the stairs, um, you know, just and, and not um, accumulate things. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I don't wash the coach that often, you know, maybe three or four times a year. Yeah, same here. And uh, I, did, I had a special coating put on the coach where they don't even want you to wax it for five years. Ah, must be like a silicone-based type stuff? I don't know. It was called Duratane. You know, okay. it's a $2,500 package. Yeah, to, yeah. But they even undercoated the um, metal frame underneath. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Good deal. So, a lot of... You, so, you're... Your, your, I've noticed your emphasis is preventative, <laughs> preventative right. maintenance. Yeah. So, well, to me, which I agree so much. If the system goes down, it's down, and yeah. you don't have it. So, and that'll always happen at the most unopportune time. <laughs> yeah. That's very true. Um, next question is: Now that you're in an RV, do you have any issues? And I don't need anything uh, personal, but do you have any issues, uh, uh, with banks or getting money or having money access? Uh, we don't because, uh, we belong to a couple of different credit unions and we are able to bank online if we wish. And then using the debit cards and then both of us have, uh, uh, auto deposit, you know, for our payroll checks. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, we're all auto too. So, yeah. um, I don't know if anybody, I'm sure people still do it, but getting auto, not getting auto. I guess if they're doing like work camping and stuff, they probably still get normal checks. So making a deposit would, I, I got to, it must be a little harder for folks. <laughs> That's all I can think of. Yeah. So interesting. Um, I, 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 I want to make sure your, your wife has a chance to answer this. What do you miss the most about not having a house? And she is, she had actually a great answer. So, what do you miss about not having a house? Yard. The yard. Why? 
Are you do you like garden? Uh, garden? Yeah, flowers and. You find it better also. Um, do you kind of miss it sometimes because of your pet? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, sometimes I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel guilty that yeah. I don't have a backyard for Cinder to go play in. Right. Well, we, mm -hmm. we make a point of typically on Sunday morning going to a, a private area where I allow him to run in an off leash manner where he can actually do what he's supposed to do. Yeah, at, our, at our home, we had a, a, a wildlife sanctuary in the backyard for wild birds. Ah. And uh, so we kind of missed that a little bit. Yeah. So um, so I didn't get your answer. What, what do you miss about a house? Anything? Are you glad not to have one right now? Right now, I'm, I'm really enjoying the coach. Uh, it, it's compact, you know, and it's, it's taken some adjustments to get rid of stuff, mm -hmm. but, uh, it, it, I feel safe in this coach. Uh, yes. it's warm. Uh, I never had air conditioning in my house. I've got two air conditioners in this coach. So, so when, right. it's, so when it's, it's hot, uh, you I know, didn't have one either. So <laughs> I, I so much agree with you. So, um, and once you learn the basics with the systems, I mean, it's really not that difficult to keep things where they're supposed to be. Yeah. So, um, uh, I kind of, you kind of gave us your future a little bit, but do you folks have like a long-term plan or future plans that you'd like to do with the RV? Uh, we probably won't do a lot of long distance traveling with this coach. Yeah. We, we keep we kept our small coach, and we'll still use that for recreational camping and uh, hunting and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Um, you don't think about going down south or anything? No interest or... in warm weather. <laughs> He's a hardcore Northwest person, guys. I'm telling you. Yeah. Well, everyone I know that's retiring is moving down south. South. So Agreed. if I want to go visit someone, we're going down south to visit. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So all my kids went south, though. I, I have a. I have to f chase my children. <laughs> um, if you had a chance, and, and of course we'll talk about our past bad stuff. But if was, is there anything you would have done different in the last maybe year and a half, two years? if you had a chance to do something a little bit different? I think we would have made a much more conscientious effort to get rid of more things <laughs> yes. because, you know, paying for storage in addition to everything else, it's really an unnecessary expense. Mm. And I think we just should have made a much more sincere effort in liquidating things either via Craigslist or... Mm. Um, eBay or just leaving it on the corner and say free stuff or something. You know, I, I'm finding, I, I, you know, I do a lot of interviews, so I, I'm getting a theme with you guys a little bit is, and this is a big subject, is what do you do with your stuff? And then uh, it sounds like uh, you kind of have a similar problem me and Sherry have. Sherry and I have held on to enough in case we have to move into a house. So we're not totally... And so we mm -hmm. only use like a 10 by 20 and we actually showed that on video how we did ours. But um, it sounds like you've held on to a little more than that in, in, as far as bigger toys kind of. Well, we've so got you, sea kayaks and canoes yeah. and, and uh, reloading benches and different things like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, stationary shop tools. I had a complete shop at my house. Yeah, so those are hard to give up, I know. Yeah, well, you spend and your whole time, lifetime, accumulating this stuff, and and, and then you're just going uh, 10 cents on the dollar when you get rid of it. I know. And, and I have, the other problem I have is um, a lot of my folks know that I'm a square dance caller. Oh. So I care, I have to hold on to my calling equipment. Yeah, my and, parents uh, did that. Yeah, or so... not called, but... Um, so yeah, so it's like I got things like that too. We, or I used to be a kite owner, so I was a cutting edge kites. And so of course we have all of our old kites. You can't get rid of that stuff. No. That's like precious. Yeah. And so uh, you sound like you're kind of going through a lot of the same things me and Sherry are. It's like, uh, you know, um, there's going to be a time when you're just going to say, let it go. Mm -hmm. Or not. You know, so it's a... Uh, um, it's, this is talked about so often, so I don't know if any of you... I think it's different for everybody. I don't mm -hmm. think, well, you know what, I can't preach that say, guys, get rid of your stuff, because it's different for everybody else. Like me, I can't get rid of all my stuff. I've got unique things, like you have unique tools, I have my calling equipment, you have your loading equipment, 
And it's like, you just don't want to give that stuff up and you can't fit it all in the coach. No. So, you know, some people are going to always have a storage unit. Yeah. This is how it is. Yeah. This is how big a storage do you want to have? So, yeah. uh, interesting subject. I wish I could just get a whole panel, of like 10 people and talk about storage. Well, much earlier in my life, I was going to move on a 40 foot sailboat. Oh, wow. And I read a small library on living aboard. And that was one of the things that, uh, they talked about Stay. is you either going to live aboard or you're not going to live aboard yeah because if you have a storage area and you have all this stuff on shore you're not living aboard true and you know you and i are still <laughs> believe it or not young <laughs> we, we we have a little more time to think about it right um because like for me and you know for me i, I i'm retiring at the end of, the, of this year but I still can't even comprehend. I'm not even going to get Social Security or anything until 62. Stay. So I still have to work for a living, too. Stay. And my wife does, too. So we can push that off a little more than others. Right. I'd say it'd be a lot different if somebody was in their retirement age, mm -hmm. 62 and above, where you really, you know, get rid, you know, get rid of your stuff or you don't. You know, what are you going to do? Um, getting too old to be wishy-washy, but we can be wishy-washy. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the younger you are, the more wishy-washy we could be. So to, to wrap this up here, and this is your time to say anything you want, is what message would you pass on to other RVers, either thinking about becoming an RVer or brand new RVers, or thinking of using an RV as a, a resource like you folks are doing as an alternative of living? Probably the, probably the biggest thing that I was ignorant about when we came aboard was how many people are out there living full time in it's coaches. Amazing. And what we what we found to get into a long term camp area, sometimes you'll go on a waiting list for six months to a year, and you still may not get a phone call. So you just need to be aware of that. Uh, that is really the only uncertainty that we have. Um, so far we're developing a pretty good relationship here at Lake Pleasant and we're able to be here September through the end of May mm -hmm. at their, you know, monthly rate. Right. Um, we're on the list to be here year round at a rate, but that sometimes takes a long time to do because it depends on the size of your coach mm -hmm. and the availability and who moves out, who moves in and that sort of thing. So there's some, some unknowns in that. Interesting. So... Anything uh, you comes to mind that uh, you'd want to pass on to somebody that's thinking about getting into RVing? There are so many RVs out there and they're increasing. And so if you get a chance to go to a RV show or whatever, go, go and look at all of them and walk through all of them and visualize yourself living in that that's great <laughs> i agree with that so much <laughs> um i guess one question i, I haven't asked and i want to finish this off with that is why did you choose a, a trailer or a fifth wheel as opposed to a motorhome i didn't since we weren't going to be traveling on the road a lot i didn't want to have the additional diesel pusher to maintain yeah. and uh, those systems in a, in a class A like the nice big Phaetons you see around here and all of that I, I didn't want that additional burden right and initially when we bought this coach we were not going to buy a tow rig because there are services out there for 400 bucks for the first hundred miles to move your coach yeah actually we uh, do the website for b3 transport up here okay so yeah and so that's what we were planning on doing and then when we had our winter spot last year before we came here we thought we were going to be there for the winter no big deal then our landlord comes and knocks on our door one sunday morning and said um there's a little problem with having this many RVers on private property, the county is asking me to have everybody leave by the end of the month. Wow. And that made me feel really uncomfortable of not having um, control over my future. Right. And even though it was only a 38 mile move, I didn't really want to spend 400 bucks for that. So I went out and researched and, and found a used truck that yeah. had been a service truck, so it was well maintained. 
and it, it, good it's good looking truck yeah it's pretty been trouble free and uh, you know i've changed all the fluids and everything and had and i even bought a um, since it was my first diesel and i was quite ignorant about diesels i bought uh like a service plan that i pay a little bit extra a month on but if something major goes wrong with that vehicle it's covered awesome well, hey, um, uh, this has been a, a long interview, but a great interview, and I want to thank both of you so much for uh, taking the time to talk to all of us. Um, it's really nice to meet a younger couple, and you know we're still young, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, working class uh, folks that are uh, using an RV as a resource. And so, anyway, I want to thank you very much for being on RV Talk Radio. And uh, I want to remind everybody that if you have an Android phone, you can actually get a podcast set up on your phone and instead of going to our website if you're watching it that way just put it into your phone type in RV Talk Radio we're in iTunes and we can all hear these great interviews so once again thank you very much thank you it's our pleasure thank you bye now I really want to thank those folks for the interview there's a lot of good wisdom in there so I want to remind our listeners to take the time and contact us. Tell us what you want us to talk about, who you want us to interview. Uh, go to our, you can go to our website at rvtalkradio.com, hit the contact button, and give us a full description or even a story if you like. You can also email me directly at rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com. We also have a phone that's taking messages right now. And we're working on that problem. But the phone number is 541-548-0958. We would love to hear from you. So don't hesitate. I also would like to remind you about RV Locks. In our descriptions, we have a link directly to our site that will give you a significant discount buying a keyless remote entry to your RV. We are so grateful to have them on board with us. And next week, be listening for our contest where we'll actually give away one free remote keyless entry system from your RV. Remember, you must have a fifth wheel, trailer, or camper. Once again, thank you for watching RV Talk Radio, and we'll see you next week. Take care now. Bye.